What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Influence Me. Today I'm very, very excited because this is one of the episodes that I've been looking forward to. I have a very special guest. This person has helped me out and is a big reason why I now have a YouTube channel. And I'm so grateful that he's here. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have Alan Eyes. <laughs> been in the works for so fucking long yes and it's funny you guys because i literally was like trying to reschedule because i had already rescheduled you what like twice yeah 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 because yeah. the first time i rescheduled you what was it oh i had my no no, no i've only rescheduled yeah, you once just because so the first time it was my big stomach pain you guys i got a really really bad stomach yeah. ache because of my freaking gallstones yeah and i was up all madrugada you guys and i texted you what like around six o'clock in yeah, the morning I was like, what the fuck is this i was like hey like my pain's barely like starting to go crazy like i don't even think i'm if if i don't go to the hospital by fucking 11 i'm probably gonna be knocked the fuck out yeah, because i yeah. need to catch up on that sleep and i just felt bad bitch i felt bad because i was like oh my god like if I cancel on him, he's going to think I don't want to nah, do it. So, what is my Rukia, you guys? I was like, let's get a date. Let's get a date. Let's get a date because I really have been wanting to come and be a yeah. guest on your podcast. No, thank you. And and actually, you're the one that, that told me, like, before I even started the project, I was talking to you about yeah. it and letting you know, like, hey, this is what I want to do. And you're like, oh, let me know when I'm down to go. Yeah. And I'm like, shit, that's so fucking cool that you're, like, down to do, you know, help me out. In it's this crazy way, you because know? I was, like, one of the first people that I'm like, I'll be a guest. I'll be a guest. Yeah. And 10 fucking episodes later, I'm <laughs> finally a fucking I guest. Know. You know, you, you're asking me you're like hey so what when is our episode i'm like i want to wait because i wanted to make sure that i already kind of had a system going, going yeah before i had you because you wanted to establish your podcast yeah, yeah yeah exactly before i had you because you you've obviously been a big person in like oh, thank you. in my life so um in terms of business friendship yeah i really appreciate all the help do you remember when is the first time we started working together <sighs> okay a little so pop quiz a little pop quiz. I'm like, I'm like, I don't. I just you know. I feel like the first time, you know, I had been seeing you because I feel like before I started working with you, you would work with the Murillo twins. Yeah. And at the time, I was also working with Abraham. Yeah. Um, and I would see that you guys, you know, followed each other and worked together. I think you guys had worked together on yeah, like yeah, a yeah. couple things. And I remember the first time ever that I hit you up. It was when my sister was launching her jewelry line. Yeah. You guys, woo! I know. Even a lot of you guys yeah. don't even remember that happened, but. Um, I had hit you up for photography. Yes. Right? Yes. It was for photography. Um, he killed it with my sister's photography shoot for her jewelry line. And then we fucking, I started having, yeah, yeah we, start, we started, you started actually coming and helping me with Noche de Pendejada yes. season two. Yes. You guys, we're talking about like almost two years it ago. It was 2019. And this is the reason why I remember, guys, because uh -huh. that same day that I went to go shoot that, that photo shoot. Uh-huh. That's the same day that we got our keys for this house. Oh, period. So, like, I did a whole vlog and everything. I never posted it because I was still shy. Like, like I didn't know. Post, like, yeah, yeah. To, po to post. That was my first time working with you. So, I didn't want to be like, oh, what the fuck? This like, I'm a vlog. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, I was like, I'm going to just keep it cool. But, yeah, I remember it was that day. So, it's been since 2019. Damn, that's 19, 20, 21, 22. Yeah, tres yeah. años, you guys. And it's so crazy because I feel like we've been working for so long, but it doesn't feel like we've been working yeah. that long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know it what I mean? Like, recent, yeah. It feels like, oh, every time he comes to because if you guys don't know, no, Adrian films every from season two, maybe episode. I want to say like three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since season two of No Chip and the Hellas, he's been filming every single episode. Like, if Adrian could not come through, the episodes are not getting filmed. If Adrian <laughs> can't make it, I'm sorry to tell you. I literally tell all my guests. <laughs> Like, hey, I know I'm trying to accommodate your schedule, but I also we got, got my schedule. video guy's my schedule to fucking <laughs> keep it up. You know, so I also like you say, you say I'm a big part of your success, but I also do feel like you and your brother now are a big part of Noche de Pendejada success. Thank you know you, what I mean? You, because you. you guys, you know, they do all the dirty work, you guys. I literally just show up and fucking record. I don't yeah, even press record, bitch, because they do that. <laughs> I just show up and... I, yeah. I'm like I just be the star. <laughs> <He's a> star. <laughs> no, but now today is a little different because to yeah. now now today the tables have turned. Now I'm gonna ask you a couple questions, put you in the hot seat, try to get a I'm little scared. bit. Of, I'm not gonna get some tea again. This this podcast is not about that. But I also I do want to know about your life. I do want to know yeah. a little bit more about you because I know you, but I don't know you know, know you like you. that. You know what I mean? Like, and we, I feel like you never you it's you you can always learn something new of someone, yeah. even if you've known them for so long. Right, you know what I mean? Right, right. So yeah, so. Talk to me about, let's start with how Alanize, like you are Alanize and I feel that 
what's always surprised me about you is the amount of energy you have when you turn on the camera, when you're like basically performing. Yeah. I feel that it's like a performance, it's a, yeah, basically. Yeah, I'm a performer, you know? yeah. So like, I want to know how would you get to where you're at now, but let's take it since the beginning. Let's go back to like when you're a kid, were you always this happy, always this energetic, always this like, you know? Yeah. So before we start off, I do want to say that I'm super fucking nervous. <laughs> Wait, this is my camera, yeah, right? I'm like, I'm nervous. I don't know. I'm just so nervous because I'm never on this seat. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm always you yeah. you know and i've gotten so many people like trying to get me on their podcast and i'm always very scared and nervous because you never know you can't trust a bitch i don't even know how people trust me you know what i mean yeah. to like fucking interview <laughs> them but uh, i'm here so i literally was talking to agent i was like i'm gonna come on your podcast and voy a hablar de todo. you know what i mean i'm gonna talk and fucking be an open book because i genuinely trust you and i genuinely know that you're not gonna try to make me a fool right, online right, right. you know so to start off with your question um that's crazy because you, like you said, I, as soon as the camera's on, I perform. You've seen me when there's days I'm like, oh, dude, yeah. I don't want to film. <laughs> yeah. Like there's days you guys when he gets there and I'm like in a badass mood. Yeah. I'm like, I fucking hate everything that's going on. This is going, cause I literally sometimes yeah. like, like, what do I ask you guys? Yeah. Like that's how close, like not, not close, but that's how like I trust him. You know what I yeah. mean? As like, not just someone that works with me, but like, I trust him like, on a personal level because there's shit that I tell you that like yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously like if I was trying to be super super professional like I you wouldn't be you, would, you know yeah, what I mean exactly. you I wouldn't feel comfortable yeah. and I really do I feel like you know taking it back when I first started social media even before that so how I'm gonna go ahead and I feel like I haven't really talked about this um, when I started when I was really young I want to say fifth grade um I was very fortunate enough for my parents, to, well, not my parents, my dad to have a really, really good job, like okay. a construction job, you know what I mean? And um, nos iba bien, gracias a Dios, no nos faltaba para la renta, no nos faltaba nada. Like, I was super fortunate up to a grade, but I feel like there came a time where unfortunately despidieron a mi dad yeah. and you know if you guys know if you guys are mexican latino or if you guys have ever had struggling parents um a lot of the dads you know when they don't have jobs they go to home depot yeah you know to get like you if you guys ever go even if you guys don't know what i'm talking about if you guys ever go to home depot and you guys see, see a bunch of men just standing out Waiting they're not for, there kicking it yeah. they're not there trying to like talk conversate with their homies they're there trying to see if someone will literally pick them up yeah. to like hire them for a job. You right, know, it's right. like a one day job. Uh, yeah. So my dad for a long time after que lo despidieron, you know, we were having a lot of financial issues and um, he would go to Home Depot every day. A veces venía, no agarró nada. A veces le iba bien, agarró something, you know, and I feel like this is something I feel like even now as an adult, I talk to my parents about. When les fue bien, you know, porque hubo un tiempo donde ganó mi dad mucho, donde he was making a good amount of money. Back in the daily, you know, $30 an hour in construction was really, yeah, really yeah, good. Was good. Um, you know, so one of the things my mom always says that, like, en ese entonces cuando les fue bien, como ganaban, lo gastaban. Mm. And I feel like that's something super, super important to, like, take from that. Me now as an adult, I take from it because I saw so much struggle going because I saw my parents doing that you know right, what I mean right. ganaban mucho ok como lo vamos a gastar yeah. si gané mil dólares como voy a gastar mil dólares mm. right, you know right, what I right. mean and because they were always like you know giving us this giving us that um, you know they weren't saving mm. you know so I remember when I was in high school um, it got worse because as the years went by my dad got older obviously and in Home Depot or in just construction jobs the older you get yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you become the miran and the the bosses like you become a liability. Right. You know what I mean? They're like, no, este señor cómo se va a subir al techo. Even though my dad was able to do it, but they weren't trusting him yeah. with like, oh, he's not gonna be able to do it. They like, don't look no, at no, you no. the same. Yeah. Yes, you know, like no está joven. Yeah. And I remember in high school, this is like I feel like I've shared this story, but I feel like a lot of you guys don't know. Like I was telling you, like I have a lot of brand new followers. When I was in high school, I remember. Um, this is also another thing, like, not even to put my parents on blast, but, you know, when your parents, no one fucking gives you a guidebook. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I've talked about this with a lot of my close friends, and funny story is, one of my closest friends, I would, as a kid, I would always be like, oh my God, son ricos, son ricos, like, they don't struggle, they don't struggle. Mm. 
And yeah, the adultos are like, no, dude, like my parents struggled. Yeah, you start but realizing. You start yes, seeing. you start realizing, but they were like, but the thing with my parents, they never let us know they were struggling. Mm. You know, like, si tenían problemas financially, they wouldn't talk about it. But I feel like with my parents, not that they would tell us, but we were in dinner y tenían la plática entre ellos. Mm. You know what I mean? And that, hearing. Yes, you know, and I feel like at the time in high school, I was the only one living there with my parents. Yeah. Me and my brother, because my sister had already moved out and my oldest brother had moved out as well. So, yo me acuerdo in high school, I remember I was, I still remember you guys, I was a junior in high school. Um, and, you know, escuchabas mucho, mis parents dormían en la sala because I was spoiled. I, I will always say this, it's so fucked up, but like, me dejaban el cuarto and they would sleep en la sala en el piso. My yeah. parents no conocieron una cama oh, hasta que yo me moví to my apartment and I bought them their first bed. Holy shit. And at that time, they were able to move into my room. Damn. You know what I mean? So they were always at the sala and my room was some way kind of like very close to the sala. And I remember every night, like for a month straight, I would hear them kind of argue and kind of just talk in la noche, ya cuando todos estábamos dormidos, um, about money. You know, like, oh, fuck. I, I still remember, and as a kid, like, it's something that you're not supposed to or you don't even want to hear. Um, I remember my, um, I guess at that time, they were already getting evic eviction notices. Oh, shit. Yeah. So it was getting serious. It was getting serious. I think they were, like, three months behind. Mm. You know what I mean? And ya les, uh, les habían dado, like, a you know, like a 60 day, like, hey, they start paying or get the fuck out of the house. And is it a house that you guys, that your parents owned? or is No, it, no, no, no. It was like, we were re renting. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. We were renting. Um, it was actually down the street right here uh, in Santa Ana, like oh, 17th shit. Street. Um, shout out 17 in Bristol. Um, and yeah, you know, I would hear that. I would hear that. And as a kid, escuchando eso, I was not lo no longer a kid. I was a fucking teenager. I was like seven, 16, 17. As a kid, me, me daba mucha impotencia. Yeah. Like, what the fuck am I doing? What the fuck am I doing? And I remember feeling so bad because I didn't know all this was going on. And I was trying to start my YouTube channel. And yo me acuerdo que yo le exigía. Like, mm -hmm. I, would, I, I was such a bitch. I feel like a lot of it had to do because I was so... I just felt, growing up gay, I felt like... I just felt like, you know, there was a lot of love like missing mm. you know because i felt like i was never able to be 100 percent myself growing up so like i was always very like en vez de pidiendo cosas yo exigía mm. so you had like your little attitude yes you like know. a little attitude you know and i feel like that's super normal but like now as an adult i'm like fuck you're like i was an asshole <laughs> yeah i was literally a fucking asshole to my fucking parents <laughs> so during that time when i didn't know that all that was going yo le estaba pidiendo cámara a mi mamá y cara, será like four, oh, or five, four hundred dollars. Yeah. To now, obviously, like it's to me like obviously four hundred dollars a lot. But like at the time, look, yo me pongo a pensar ahora like now, okay, four hundred dollars. Gracias a Dios, me va muy bien that I can buy. But at the right. time, that was not even my mom's weekly check. Yeah. And imagine what they're going through. And they're like going shit. through that. And I'm over here like ma, quiero una cama. So at the time when I would hear that conversation. I felt really bad because I was like, fuck, like, we're going broke. We're not going to be. Y luego yo también era muy creído en la escuela. Yeah. So, like, to me, me daba pena, like, oh, my God, ¿qué va a pensar la gente? Like, oh, he has to move. Or, like, I thought we were going to. I was thinking the fucking worst, yeah, bitch. Yeah. I'm like, we're about to go homeless. <laughs> like, in Santa Ana, if you know, there's, um, you know, there's a lot of homeless that live in the bridge. Right, right, right. So, that's where I felt like, oh, that's where we're going to go kick it at. You know what I mean? So, I remember one day I was... Um, I was thinking and thinking. I was like, I'm going to get a job. I'm going to fucking get a job and ayudar como pueda ayudar. Um, I didn't tell my mom. I didn't tell no one. And I remember going to the counselor's office because I was like, I want them to sign me off to do independent studies. And if you guys don't know what independent studies is, it's kind of like, you know, you go to your, your school and you tell them like either there's a problem going on that mm. you can't come to school every day. Yeah. And, you know, you go like a couple of days. Yes. A week. You only go like once a day, turn in your paperwork. Y yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you do all the work at home. Right. A lot of people do that when they work or they just, you know, depend. I don't know. There's a lot of circumstances. Right. I remember I went to my counselor, vulnerable as fuck, started crying and telling her my situation. Like, hey, you know, like we're going broke. Like, I don't even know if like we're going to have a home next month. Like, uh -huh. and I want to get a job to help my parents. And uh, I remember that I remember the exact same words. The counselor looked at me in the eye. She literally looked at me in the eye. She's like, I'm not going to give you independent studies 
And I was like, this oh. bitch. I was like, why? <laughs> you know, like, obviously, I was, I was all crying, bitch, but I was like confused. I was like, bitch, I'm over here, like, yeah, yeah, being yeah. vulnerable as fuck. Like, I'm telling you why. And she was like, she literally looked at me straight in the eye. She's like, that's not your responsibility. That's your parents. They'll mm. figure it out. Mm. And to me, that hit me so hard because even as a kid, I was like, this bitch, like, la tiene fácil ella. Right, right. Uno right. sin saber, maybe she has her struggles too, but right, uno but, sin saber, I'm like, bitch, the fuck? Yeah. Like, it's going to be my problem too when I'm fucking homeless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, obviously, I couldn't do shit about it. Um, and then um, we ended up moving to Anaheim, which I feel like not a lot of people know, but like, when I moved from Santa Ana to Anaheim, I was told that, oh my God, like my dad got a better job because I was a kid that I went vergüenza. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now I don't give a fuck because I'm like, bitch, like because of all that struggle and because of all that shit I saw, that made you like you it made me hungry. Yeah. It, made, it, it grew this hunger for me that I didn't want to struggle. You know what I right. mean? Even though I have. Um, but yo de vergüenzudo, like muy cre me creía. Um, I would be like, oh, my dad got a better job. We're moving like somewhere better. We're moving like to Anaheim, whatever. And at the time, also Santa Ana was considered the ghetto. Yeah. And Anaheim was like a little step up, but it really wasn't. Anaheim at the time was cheaper. Oh, yeah. Move me up, to eat the fucking <laughs> microphone. Anaheim at the time was cheaper. So I always told that story to like my friends. Oh, why are you moving? Oh, my dad got a better job. Yeah, we got we'll a get mansion. Yeah, we got like, a I'm here, like, <laughs> like, hey, like, obviously, like, nada que ver. You yeah. know what I mean? And I remember at the time we were paying a um, thousand fifty. I still you, oh, this you is still what remember. I mean. This is what I mean about you guys. About that was like one of my parents' toxic traits. Like todo lo hablaban in the dinner table, even though they weren't talking to us. They're like just they having always, a conversation. Yes, you know what I mean. Like as if we weren't there. Mm. You know, capta. So yo sabía cuánto se pagaba de renta. Yo sabía cuánto se pagaba. Yo sabía cuando nos subían la renta. Yo me acuerdo que pagamos for a two bedroom house a thousand fifty cuando empezamos salimos a a thousand two hundred. And at the time that was a lot. Y yo me acuerdo que cuando agarramos un apartment in Anaheim it was like a thousand one. It was like a thousand like. A hundred. Right, right, right. A hundred dollars less, but like we were just trying to leave because my parents thought was like, okay, we owe three months. We don't even have to pay them. Like, this let's is, move out. Like, let's start somewhere new. You know what I mean? Just dip. And I remember my aunt had a hookup with the manager of the new apartment, so they didn't even do like that. Calling the old apartment yeah, yeah. or like the old house, you know? So luckily i don't even know how shit turned around but also my mom started working again you know actually no my mom had already been working but at the time my mom you know con lo que ganaba mi mamá mi mamá mi mamá siempre era nomás ganaba dinero to pa los gustos y pa la comida because oh, I, okay. see, this this yeah. is what i mean you guys like my mom my dad todos los, los biles pero mi mamá lo que se encargaba con su cheque consentía. de ella era los con, nos consentía y, y la comida a ella mm. le tocaba comprar comida every week with her check se la tenía que averiguar cómo le iba a ser, pero comida. You know what I mean? And we moved to Anaheim, and I think things started looking a little better. You know what I mean? Like, at the time, my brother had already, um, you know, he had a kid, um, and he was living with us. My oldest one, Gabriel's dad. So le ayudaban con la renta. You know, I think my oldest, my other oldest brother también ayudaba un poquito con la renta. And um, se les hacía más fácil, se les hizo más fácil. I, I think as you, better, it was getting same. better, right. you know. So when I was in my senior year, um, I started. That's when I already was already posting YouTube videos because I started post not even YouTube videos. I started posting little Instagram videos back in, um, in when I lived in Santa Ana before mm -hmm. we got kicked out, but they wouldn't go as viral. You know what I mean? And I remember I started posting, I started posting, I started posting. Which, funny enough, that's how I came out to a lot of my friends. Yeah, but how 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 did you? What made you get into Instagram, or what, was it just like a, as a joke, or was it like? Well, oh, okay, funny story. Well, I didn't technically. I didn't choose to be an influencer. Ah, uh -huh. I'm like being an influencer chose me. No, it's just so funny because yo no yo ni ni me captaba. Right. Ni me captaba la idea. I'm talking about 2015, you guys. Like, if you guys look back, I'm one of the first beauty boys in makeup. Like, there's um fucking. Like, interviews about me back in the day before I was, like, a mal hablado. Like, I'm on Marie Clary. Like, Beauty Boys in Makeup with, like, James Charles, Patrick Starr, you know, yeah. Manny MUA. Like, very few um, Beauty Boys in, in Makeup at the time. And I never thought about getting, you know, being big on YouTube. I remember I had my little account. I had, like, maybe, like, 500 followers. And I never came out to my friends. Never. Um, but what I did was I remember I posted a picture with makeup 
That was your first time like posting Ever, it Ever, yes. My first picture posted it with makeup. And that got a lot of my friends talking between uh. each other. So then I would have them asking like, hey, like I saw what you posted. Are you this? Are you that? Like, are you transitioning? Are you like wanting to be a girl? Yeah, are you gay? Like yeah. what's going on? And I was like, well, yeah. Like what else? Like I don't have to explain to you like that was that. You know what I mean? I kept posting little videos back in the day, um, little makeup tutorials. If you go to my channel, I don't know if you put overlays, but they were very popular back in right, the day, right. little makeup tutorials with music over them, like Sin Hablar. Um, and I posted one, went to sleep. I woke up with 50,000 followers. Damn. Yeah. Back in the day, if you know, if Huda Beauty, um, if Huda Beauty um, fucking Trend Mood or all these big channels posted you, you would gain hella. That's why back in the day it was so easy to grow. I would post a video and I would gain like 10,000 followers from a video. Damn. Now it's like, bitch, like you have to almost like vender la pinche nalga para sacar aunque sea five followers. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. But back, I woke up and I was like, whoa, like what the fuck? I go investigate how the fuck I was gaining all these followers because I'm like, bitch, is someone fucking tricking me? Like what's yeah, going yeah. on? Rest assured, Huda Beauty had reposted me. One of my little videos that I did just for fun. And I remember at the time, um, I got an offer for $50. To so, yeah, like a sponsor? Someone's like, hey, we'll send you 50 bucks if you use our product in your next video. Damn. Like on Instagram. <laughs> bitch, tell me why at the time. If now you tell me, give me 50 bucks, I'll be like, bitch, mejor no lo hago. You know, like, <laughs> wait, I'm going to struggle more trying to fucking do the content than lo que me va a durar los piti, yeah, yeah, yeah. 50 bucks. But at the time, bitch, like, and then my parents were still kind of going through it. Ya está más alivianido, but like. I yeah. wanted to see how I can help. Bitch, at the time, I was like, 50 bucks, You're a bitch like, can be a fucking millionaire. <laughs> like, a bitch can buy my parents a house with those 50 bucks, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. I accepted it, and I was like, wow, like, I can make money. I remember um, at the time, um, I didn't even have a bank account, so I had to fucking make, like, a fucking PayPal. So those 50 bucks stayed in my PayPal account for, like, months. How, how old are you? How old are you? I was, time? like, 17. You're 17. So, um... At the, it, it stayed at my fucking bank because you had to transfer it to your bank. Right. Uh, until I ended up transferring it to my sister's bank. And me lo dio mi y se lo dio mi sister. And that was like my first spark. Like, wow, I can help my family doing this. Mm. I can make money while doing something I love because I was doing makeup just for the fuck of it, for the love of it. You know what I mean? I was getting into it. I wasn't even that good at the time. And um, yeah, that's how I started that's, that's doing social media. Started, uh, everything. When I started seeing I was growing rapidly, I was like, fuck. I think, I don't know, I was like at 100K. Like, I, I mean, after I hit 50K, it did slow down because I was already like, whatever. And I remember when I met Danny, I was like about to hit 100K. Like, I was like maybe like at 80K at the time. How, how long was that transition? Like from that, that was maybe like a couple months. Oh, shit. Yeah, like maybe like. Two months. So you're going. Quick. Yeah, I was growing quick, and at the time that was pretty quick. You know what I mean? And I remember, you know, um, I had one summer job from junior year to senior year. Um, I worked at the OC fair, and it was getting closer to um, senior, like the end of senior year. And all my friends had a job. Irma was working at Goodwill. Danny was working at fucking TJ Maxx, and. I would tell my friends I was making hella money fucking doing social media. What, but what, what, what'd you do? A bitch what'd was you probably making like a hundred bucks a month that, during that time. What were you doing at uh, OC Fair? What was your job there? I was, um, I started, which I'm very proud of. Um, I started off as, um, I was working at the Juicy Stand, which is like the hot dogs and everything. Okay. Started off as a bus boy. Second day got promoted to ma assistant manager. Okay. Damn. Yeah. You're scaling so I, It's because the, the first day was super, super busy that yo... I took initiative and I remember I was like hustling everyone like, hey guys, come on, come on, come on. We need to go, go, go. <laughs> y yo sin tener el título. No yeah. sé por qué chingados me hacían caso los pinches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Squinkles igual de mi edad. You know, I don't know why the fuck they were listening to me, but they were listening to me. And the manager, shout out to, um, her name was Tasha. Um, really cool girl, but she was lazy. She would never want to be on staff. You know, she, <laughs> she, she would go because it was a traveling fair. So they would go like they had like little bungalows okay, okay, in okay. the back. So yeah, venía una hora y se iba a dormir. Mm. You know what I mean? So she saw que movido era and she called me. She was like, hey, come the second day. Y yo asustado. Yeah. She was like, hey, like, what was that yesterday? Like, and I was like, fuck me, when I go red, you're yeah, yeah, yeah. over here be taking the position of a manager, <laughs> like, scandalous. and me over here being a busboy. She was, I thought she was gonna tell me shit. She was like, I like that. She's like, and they offered me the position of a, uh, a promoter. Matter. Yeah. That's and it was crazy. funny because I worked with a lot of my high school friends too, like three of my high school friends. And I was in charge of the fucking, um, I was in charge of 
the schedule and we were only allowed to give each kid like four hours because I don't want to chingle the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had three friends in my stand. I would give them all their eight hour shifts. <laughs> I'll pay you and them then too. I would have other kids come complain. I'd be like, well, I didn't give you enough hours because you're lazy. And I went out. <laughs> and I remember there would be kids that would be lazy, dude. They would take like two hour breaks. Había un muchacho. Um, se iba on a two hour break. Cuando nomás un era como 15, 30 minutes. Llegó una vez y le dije, hey, um, you were supposed to be clocked in an hour and a half ago. You can go. Damn, you, you took home. that fucking lo corrí. Yeah, I took that <laughs> shit serious. I know a lot of it. I remember there was some twins in there, um, hated the fuck out of me, and they wanted to ride on me on the manager. And I was like, okay, come. I'll take you to ride on me. <laughs> I remember, like, I was a bitch. But that was my only job. That was from going to... Um, Junior to senior year, y ya después de eso ya no trabajé. Obviamente el dinero lo gasté como lo gasté. Um, rápido se me fue. Um, and then when Danny and everybody had jobs, I was like, what the fuck am I doing? You know, yeah. I was doing social media, but like, it was only paying me like max like $100 to $200 a month. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Um, so I remember, um, you know, graduated. I was making a little bit more, like maybe like 500 a month. At this time, you still hadn't started YouTube? or No, I wasn't doing YouTube. I was just doing just Instagram. Videos, yeah. So it was when it was just like Instagram little videos. Okay. Um, I moved in with Danny super, super quick, like two months, two to three months after graduating. Uh, but it was also because, a um, funny story, um, I lived comfortably in my house, but I feel like I was never home. And then also like, I like living very a gusto, very mm. tranquilo. And in my house at the time, it was so much chaos going mm. on. You know what I mean? Like, que acá, una pelea con acá, que con mis brothers, que con mis parents, que right, con mi right. dad. So yo, like, me quería escapar. Y right. yo recuerdo que le dije a Danny, like, and at the time, my parents were, like, planning on moving out to, like, Visilia, which is, like, four hours away from here. Damn. And I told Danny, I was like, hey, we're not going to work out. Damn, I, I like, I'm like, moving very far. <laughs> like, we're going to have to break up. And at the time, I was already sleeping over at Danny's house every single day. Like, Danny would get out of, out of work at 1030. Yeah. He would be like, hey, I'm outside your house. Pick me up, take me to his house, and I would sleep over every day. School day, non-day, and at the time, we already graduated. Damn. So, um, I remember um, Danny told his mom, and his mom's like, well, he fucking practically lives yeah, here. Like, he's here every well. fucking day, yeah. Mejor les cobramos renta y, like, move Damn. in, you know? Uh, moved into Danny's mom's house, stayed there nine months, then moved into our apartment, which we struggled a lot in the beginning first month, and that's when I started YouTube. So there was a time where um danny was wake, making way more money than me like i was literally like not mantenido but he was just making right. a significant amount more yeah and there was a time where danny was like bro you gotta get a job like you gotta do something like how the fuck are you gonna pay rent and i remember i never i i said no like i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna do youtube no sé cómo, pero va a salir. and i remember i told danny give me two months um, si no lo hago, I'll go fucking apply at a factory or some shit. Yeah. And those two fucking months, I hustled fucking hard. And like I said, the fucking rest is history. And it's crazy because if I didn't take that fucking leap of fucking faith right. and that fucking... Because it's a fucking hard decision to be like, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and sit in front of the camera. Y, yeah, y yeah, a ver yeah. que y que los viles vengan y que la verga. Yeah, you know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah. So it was something that I really had to like... Danny would be like... Yeah, Danny and I'm pretty mad. sure like there's always like those clash moments, like even like with uh, regular people that have uh, ordinary jobs. Yeah, someone's not making enough or no tienen para renta. Like your parents, they there starts being those arguments. Arguments, so, yeah. So like it's like I'm pretty sure Danny was kind of trying to, in a way, not go that route, which is like, hey, let's help each other out. Let's you know get a job and then like do I'll, something. Like yeah, he's yeah, like yeah, social yeah. media no te va dar right, de comer. Right. Yeah, but let's take it so. It's being a being a guy. You mentioned like you coming out in social media, being a guy influencer or beauty influencer. Mm -hmm. How did your parents or your family take that? Was there a coming out moment for them, or were you just since you know? Because there's kids that yeah. Lolo Samira, oh, like he's more feminine, and most likely you know. And then there's obviously people that just are straight machos and yeah, shit, yeah, and yeah. then they come out like later on. But like, how was it for your family? How did I they feel take like it? I was always super feminine. Okay. Like it's crazy because when my tias and my my mom me cuentan historias de cuando estaba chiquito, la, la edad de like maybe like eight years old, right. yo jugaba muñecas con mis primas mm. y con mi sister. I was always very more attached to my sister than I was to my brothers. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, so jugaba con mi sister like the girly stuff. Y mi tía siempre le decía a mi mamá like, oh, él va a ser joto, joto, which is like in the time like usan esa palabra muy right, strong, you right. know. But no lo dicen en mala vez, en mala, en mala fe. Um, shout out to my tía Angélica, which is actually one of our closest tías and actually the closest tía that we have. 
Um, so en, platicaban entre ellas de chiquitas. As they grew up, it was kind of more like a... Right. Nadie hablaba de eso. Yeah. You know what I mean? Funny story is, I came out forcefully. I came out because I was getting in trouble. Um, you guys know I was stealing makeup at Target. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying, bitch. I was set, it was junior year, going on to see, yeah, junior year actually. Um, a bitch was needed, a bitch needed makeup to do his yeah. little makeup videos. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, And my mom didn't have money. How was I going to fucking do it? I was stealing fucking makeup at Target, Sephora. CVS was hard, but I would do it. A bitch would do it. <laughs> you figure out a way. Uh, y todavía me acuerdo. Me acuerdo el día. A, um, April Fool's. April Fool's. I went with one of my friends. We hit up four Targets, bitch. Four Targets. Successfully stole at three. <laughs> <laughs> Target's going to come after yeah, you. Yeah, bitch. No, and I'm done as fuck. Yeah, no, bitch, I already paid my fine. Like, I paid, my mom paid actually too much for that. Um, yo me acuerdo que también me da mucha adrenaline. Yeah. Like the, I would go in with my gym bag, because at the time I would go to the gym. And I would be like, oh, like pick something on there. <laughs> yeah, si me robaba like $300, $200 worth of makeup. Fuck. You know, like L'Oreal. And that's a lot of makeup because drugstore makeup is cheap. You know yeah. what I mean? At Sephora me daba más miedo, pero a veces me, me robaba mejor los testers. Oh, okay. Porque había escuchado que si te roba los testers, they can't do you anything. It's a fucking open product already, right, right, you know? Right. But I was still at Sephora too, which is crazy because years later now, I'm like, I work with them. You yeah. know what I mean? Like all these brands I used to steal from, they send me shit for free now. Um, y me acuerdo that um, the fourth target that we hit up was actually down the street from Disneyland. Mm -hmm. um, and I told my friend, I was like, bitch, like, watch, we can hit up another target. Like, And she drove, right? I went in there fucking confident, bitch. Confident, like, <laughs> stealing, stealing, stealing. Probably had like $300 worth of makeup already in there. Prior to already having like $900 from the other three targets. Oh. And as I was walking out. And funny story is, all the makeup that I was getting wasn't going to be for me that one. The last round. I was doing it for my friend. Because mm. the other ones were for me. I was like, bitch, I'm But not sure. all that was sold in the same day? Yeah. Oh, so you guys were hitting up every Yeah, show. I oh, said, bitch, shit. like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> I literally was like, ya me voy a retirar. Tengo que retirarme bien, you know? And, um... Yeah, as I was walking out of a Target, there was a big man waiting for me. Fuck. He's like, hey. And I was like, he told me, he's like, I know what you did. And I was like, what would I do? Like, <laughs> yo ahí todavía, todavía queriendo mentirle. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. yo no hice nada. De, de que estás hablando? <laughs> um, and they took me to the back. They didn't take my friend because I was the one that walked out with it. And I remember, bitch, I remember the guy was like, how old? He's like, can I see your ID? And I was like, I don't have one. He's like, how old are you? And me thinking, if I tell them I'm over age, they're not going to call my mom. Oh. You know what I mean? So I was like, I'm 18. And I wasn't even 18 at the time. I was 17. And, I was, and then he's like, okay. I was like, we're going to have to call the police. But él sabía como que me yeah, miraba yeah. chamaquillo, you know? And then I was like, oh, no, 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 no just kidding. I'm 16. I remember what I said because I, I think I was 16 um, at the time. And I was like, I'm 16. And then he's like, okay, then we're going to have to call your mom. Call my mom. Um, fucking... Um, We call her. She's like, no, que? Me estás, es chiste, whatever. They had to come pick me up, whatever. Grounded me. And my mom, you guys, I kid you not, like, if my mom used to ground me, bitch, I was so used to, like, no va a salir el próximo día yo salía. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yo yeah. me mandaba solo. My mom trabajaba mucho que, like, oh, no va a salir, estás castigado. Okay. Yeah. Yo yeah. mañana salgo. You know what I mean? Y me acuerdo que esa vez, like, no va a salir. Y yo, the next day, April 2nd, was a Saturday, yo tenía una quinceñera. Y yo dije, a la verga, yo voy a salir mañana. <laughs> Bitch, I kid you not, this one story that I always regret, not regret, like just regret where it went. Me acuerdo que um, um, April 2nd came the next day, I was grounded. But for me, that meant like, do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> like, mientras que no te vea, you know? Was getting ready. Um, my mom, no, not even makeup, just like getting ready. My mom's like comes in, she's like, ¿Qué haces? Oh, we, te dije que voy a la quinceañera. Damn, like, ¿te acuerdas? Yeah, like, te, yeah, like <laughs> bitch, <laughs> I was a little bitch. I was a cut, I'm telling you. I was like, te dije que voy a la quinceañera. ¿No vas a ir? Que no vas a Que voy a ir, yo voy a ir. Yo ya te había dicho. Yo te había... ¿Y tú crees que vas a ir después de lo de ayer? Yo ya te había dicho que voy a ir. <laughs> What? No me dejó ir. No me dejó ir. And me being a little bitch, me metí al baño, right? Okay, Trigger warning, whatever, as a kid, stupid ass shit. But I was like, maybe if I stay there long enough, 
they're going to think. Y yo me va, and cuando era chiquito, yo, I would take 10 minute showers. Mm. So for me to be more in the restroom more than 40, 40 50, an hour was, yeah. well, what's going on in there, you right, know? Right. As a fucking kid being stupid as fuck, I was like, you know what? Like, I'm going to go in the restroom and stay there for a long time so they can get worried. Like mm. me over here being yeah. dramatic, like yeah, yeah, yeah. she's probably going to think that I did something to myself. I harmed myself or something. Y me acuerdo estando en el pinche baño, you guys. Agarrando pasta, brushing my teeth, and like practicing fucking like what with the, the fuck? bubbles. Damn. Yeah, bitch, because I was like, I want them to open the door con la cuchara. Yeah. Y yo estando ahí en el piso con pinche what? like burbujas. I don't know what I was thinking <laughs> as a fucking kid, you know what I mean? Which was super toxic of me, like trying to get my way one way or the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one came and checked up. It was an hour, bitch. I was encerrado en el pinche baño por una pinche hora y nadie vino a tocarme. Damn. My mom was like, bitch, he's not going to get his way. She put her foot down. And I remember Sally, I was like, all right, fuck it. This didn't work. <laughs> like, they didn't get, don't go. Fuck. I was already in my feelings, too. I'm like, wow. Like, she's really grounded he me. started crying for And she don't even give a fuck about me. Like, the fuck? <laughs> Um, I get out of the restroom and um, the way my thing was set up, it was like a hallway. And then as soon as you get out of the restroom, it's la sala, right? Mm -hmm. Y estaba mi tía, mi tía Angelica. And I told her, I was like, I was like, oh, maybe if my tía is here, like she's not going to want to be a bitch. And she's not going to want to tell my tía that her son's a fucking stealing, that's stealing yeah, a target. Yeah, like, yeah, la yeah, vergüenza. Yeah. Me va a dejar salir, so ahí voy yo. Okay, mami, voy a listar para ir a la, a la, a la quinceañera. Todavía con el pinche. <laughs> de... Yeah, it. todavía. And my mom was like, que no vas a ir. Ya te dije por qué. Ya le dije a tu tía. No vas a ir. And that got me so mad, bitch. I still remember. I was like, I called her, um, I, I called her really bad words. Yeah, yeah, Like yeah. in front of my tía. And right. that to my mom, it really hurt her because I was like, okay, if I can be disrespectful to her, yes, okay, whatever. But in front of my aunt, it was kind of like, te pasaste. Like embarrassing. Yeah, she, it, was, it was embarrassing for mm -hmm. her. You know what I mean? Me metí al pinche cuarto, cerré la puerta y no vino a checarme. Um, I was hungry already. Ya pasaron a couple hours. My sister didn't live with us, but she came to visit. I, to, I guess my mom told her. Um... Me, me ofrecieron de comer en la, en la tarde y dije que no. And I was like, okay, pues no comas. Muérete de hambre. But because she was pissed, you yeah, know, yeah. obviously. They always say that. Yeah, That's like, muérete de hambre. I'm like, really? I'm like, <laughs> like, really, mom? Like, um, pero yo, por okay, yo tampoco no voy a comer. Like, I'm going to give you a hard time. Um, but I would go, when my sister got there, estaban comiendo ellos. Y yo me acuerdo que yo salía a la sala enojado, eh, pero... Like acting all pissed at them and just walk around there to see si me ofrecían de comer, <laughs> pero no me ofrecían de comer. I was like, damn, she really don't give a fuck. Like, I get it. Like, I already said I don't want to eat, but like, at least, That's like, awkward. again, you know? <laughs> and me metí al cuarto otra vez enojado, and my sister came in. She's like, hey, bro, I already heard what happened. Um, do you think that's okay? And that, again, fucking pissed me off. Like, I remember telling my sister, I was like, ya te fue con el pinche mitote, pinche martita. Like, I was like, ya te fue de chismosa. Like, no sé por qué chingado no puede quedarse cosa ella misma. Because I was mad that she told my tía. And now my yeah, sister, yeah, my yeah. sister didn't live with us. So I was like, que chingados tiene mi sister que tiene que saber de lo que estoy haciendo. Right, you right. know, my free time, ah? Huh? <laughs> I'm like, that's my hobby. Like, let me go. <laughs> and um, they both came in, kind of fucking cornered me. And I remember... Um, They sat me down and they were telling me like, oh, like, tú crees que está bien lo que hiciste, like, blah, blah, blah. And at the moment, I think when it, I said it, I did say it in a sense of like, maybe if I come out now, um, it can cover the whole problem that's going on. Uh, you know what okay, I mean? Kind of okay. as in like, let's go ahead and turn the attention to me coming out instead of like. Yeah. Like, I'm fucking grounded for fucking stealing at Target. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. I remember telling my mom, I was like, es que ustedes no me comprenden. Uh, I told my mom, I was like, tú me das todo lo que necesito because gracias a Dios, mi mom, sea lo que sea, like maybe she didn't give me a lot of time growing up because she was always working, you know, y cuando llegaba de trabajar se la pasaba acostada because she was tired as fuck, which I understand, pero a mí nada de gustos nunca me faltó. No sé cómo mi mamá cada vez que salió un PlayStation me lo compraba. No sé cómo cada vez que quería cámara me lo compraba. No sé qué hacía. Si Martita vendía la nalga, no, no sé cómo la hacía. And now thinking about I'm like, fuck, my mom would make 300 bucks a week. How the fuck would they do it? Two fifty, like 250 con los taxes. ¿Cómo chingados me compraba yeah. un pinche PlayStation que costaba como 400 bucks? Yeah, they have their ways. Mom I don't know. Like, my shit. mom was my superhero. <laughs> shout out to all the moms. Shout out to all the moms shit. watching you guys. Um, appreciate your moms because I feel like I'm so lucky that I was able to appreciate her before it was too late because for a lot of people, they don't appreciate it right. until it's too late, you know? And... 
I remember I was telling her, I was like, tú me das todo esto, pero no me das tiempo. Tú no sabes lo que yo estoy pasando. You don't know what I'm going through. And at the first time, yes, I was trying to cover up the whole problem that was going on, but I was also very like, you know what? This is my time. Like, I'm tired of me being in the back burner and just kind of like, being shelved yeah. as a gay kid. You know, I knew everybody knew I was gay, but like, it's different. One thing that I will say, if anyone here is watching, I know a lot, if you're, if you know someone that's gay, but it's not out of the closet, but you know, and you think they're gay, don't fucking ever be like, oh, pues ya sabemos que eres gay. Oh, pues ya sabemos. Right. Es diferente para uno que is in the closet telling people and admitting it than people having to like, Think about it. Porque yo, yo sabía, yo, yo, dije, yo decía, oh, well, I already know, like, they suspect that I'm gay. Pero era mucho más diferente para mí, for them to suspect that me being like, I'm gay. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And I remember, um, I told my mom, es que yo no soy como mis hermanos. I was like, me, I remember, I was like, ustedes quieren que yo sea así, yo sea esto, que yo haga esto, otro, pero yo no soy como mis hermanos. And my mom was like, pues, ¿qué eres? You know, like, mm. she was like, ¿qué? ¿Qué? And I was like, yo soy gay. And then... You know, my mom started crying. My sister started crying. And then they're like, why didn't you ever tell us? My sister. And I was like, oh, it's because little comentarios que se hacen. Like, yeah. I didn't want to, you know, fucking deal with it. Um, how much was the re how much of a, a, of a relief was it? It was for a you? big relief. But it was after that, it was a little, you know, it was a little hard because I remember the next day. My mom told me, she's like, because I told you, I was like, yo no le voy a decir a mis hermanos y yo no le voy a decir a mi papá. Like, tu averiguatela. Also, still your dad and your Yeah, your you know, so I told my sister and my mom, which were super understanding, loved me, hugged me. If I wanted to go to the fucking quinceañera that day, I could have because, yeah. like, they were on my side. You right. know, like, I was gonna. <laughs> You're like, I did it. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah I know, you know. I, but I didn't go. Right, right, right. right. Um, pero si quisiera, pudiera, you know, but it was just like a, a moment, right. you know, which I love that moment. And I told my mom, I was like, I'm not gonna tell my dad. Like, I'm not gonna tell my brothers. Like, if you wanna tell them, you tell them. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna tell them. I'm going to tell them. At the time I used to go jogging, if you guys know where San Antonio College is, they have a track and field that is, it's free to use to the public. Right. And I remember que iba to this track and field to go walk with my friend. And I actually have never told this story um, online. So you're getting an exclusive. Yeah. Um, my dad, a, a reason why my You know, my dad is your typical Mexican, your typical, you know, machista, you know. I feel like now over the years, he's become more 100% accepting, you know. Right. But when he would drop me off at school before I came out, like, if there would be a gay guy, like, they would make little comments. El mi hermano. You know what I mean? Like, little comments about gay mm, people. And it would make, not me. Oh, like, oh, let's say, like, let's say we're driving. Yeah, oh, había un guy. Ira ese right. joto. Like, oh, right. ira ese es joto. Like, ese le gusta esto. You know what I mean? Right. And me being in the fucking car, I would get so much Damn. anxiety because I'm like, bitch, like, you have a joto in your car too. You right, know what I mean? Right, like, right. And to me as a kid, it would fuck me up because I'm like, damn, if this is what they think or this is how they express themselves about... Uh, Other, this hoto, yeah. which I don't like that fucking term, like what the fuck are they gonna think about the moment I come out to them? So that is why I didn't want to come out, but everybody knew. So I remember the next day, um, I was getting ready to fucking, um, I was getting ready to fucking, um, um, to go to my jog, and like I said, en la sala todos escucha era temprano eran como las cuatro de la tarde. Yo, yo tenía la puerta abierta en mi recámara, so se escuchaba toda la plática, right? So they were eating, whatever, and my mom first tells my brothers, oh, your brother's gay. He came out to us yesterday, and, you know, there's not much we can, we're going to accept it. My brothers, shout out to Henry and Luis. Hi, mom, ya sabíamos, like, we love him, like, a nosotros nos vale, like, oh, we don't dope. care, we don't that's care, dope. we don't care, whatever. But my dad made a gay comment, you know, like, he made, like, an inappropriate comment that I was not supposed to hear. And I remember I fucking cried. I fucking cried. And I stormed out of the house crying, stormed out of the house, um, went to the uh, meet up with my friend to go do our little jog. And we fucking, um, you know, did a little, I was crying, crying. And I remember I texted my mom a long ass paragraph, a long ass paragraph kind of telling her like, this is why I didn't want to come out. Um, I already knew I wasn't going to be accepted. Like, if you guys don't want to accept me, that's fine. But, like, I'm still going to do me. I texted her a lengthy-ass paragraph. Yeah. Um, I got back home, and she put me and my dad in the same room, and she gave my dad an ultimatum. Like, she literally looked straight at my dad, sin llorar, and she's like, este es tu hijo. Lo aceptas 
or you can say goodbye to all the 30 plus years that we have married Damn. in front of me. And to me, that was very like, whoa. Yeah. Like she's really about to leave my dad. No lo dejo por muchos años when they had so many problems, but she's down to leave him for me. Like that yeah. to me was like hard, you know, and seeing it, my dad was just quiet. You know what I mean? And she's like, porque es tu hijo y tú lo vas a aceptar como sea. Y si no, y no lo quieres aceptar, pues te me vas de la casa. My mom, my dad paying all the bills and me va corriendo. Yeah, you know what I mean? Fuck. And my dad was like, okay, like I'll accept him, whatever. And for many years, um, maybe want to say like two, three years, my sexuality with my dad was something that was never talked about. Mm. He would treat me the same, but it was never like, Mijo y los, y los muchachos Y mijo tienes novio Right, right y mijo that, esto. Those types of conversations Were not Yes It was just very like I knew it made my dad Uncomfortable for A couple of years But I was also very like You know what Like I don't care I don't care I don't mm -hmm. care um, I told my grandparents They were very accepting They fucking loved me Even more My grandpa started telling me Yo cuando estaba joven Yo tenía un amigo Que era joto I mean, like, yeah, You know yeah, what yeah. I mean And um, yeah, it was crazy. And I, I know when I started bringing Danny around in the beginning, now my dad doesn't give a fuck, obviously. I feel like my dad over the years, he has evolutionized because like I've been able to express myself so openly and now he fucking be telling all his fucking coworkers or when he gets little jobs here and there that his son does YouTube and that his son wears makeup and that yeah, his yeah, son yeah. does this. Like he don't give a fuck now. But I remember when I first would bring Danny around, I knew it would make my dad uncomfortable. I knew like, you know, yeah, it was odd for him because it's different for him too. Ellos siempre querían, tenía amiguitas yo, siempre, yo siempre tenía amiguitas, Dahlia, Priscilla, y siempre mi dad hacía comentarios like, oh, cásate con ella, or like, mm. oh, es tu novia, es tu novia. So I knew my dad would always want me to like, get, get with the girl, you mm. know, but obviously I'm like, girl, like, ni se me para with the yeah. girl. <laughs> so I knew it made him uncomfortable, but I was like, bitch, I'm not gonna like, stop living my life if it makes my dad uncomfortable because i told my mom and there was a lot of family that didn't accept me there was a lot of family that thought you know me coming out was like disrespectful to the family and just like oh. to the name you know what i mean and i'm not the first gay person to come out in my family you know what i mean and i remember telling my mom and that is why i'm very i'm not i'm a family person but very small family yeah your, your circle is tight my yeah my family like is my mom my, my immediate family and like one or two tias that right. i like consider like that i invite to all my parties but to me i remember telling me i was like i don't go fuck if my family does not support me i support me i'm who i am and si no like se van a la chingada and i remember being small 17 16 and talking like that about it and to this day i'm at that point you know where i'm like i don't give a fuck if no one accepts me i accept me um, and that's that, you know, so I feel like it's crazy. My little coming out story. Like that's crazy. It started from something bad. Me stealing at target to but like I mean, yeah, it, doing all that, you know, Damn. and it's crazy because, you know, um, a couple years ago, um, I remember my dad cried to me and he was like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry if I ever made you feel some way, but there is times where like, I know like he lives with a little guilt because as a kid, he would treat me different. Mm. Um, another little thing that I never really shared. I feel like my dad always knew I wasn't one of the boys, you know what I mean? And he had two boys, you know, my, my brother made him, uh, uh, a, 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 an abuelo really okay. early on. And so did my other brother. And, you know, whenever my dad would need help in like, the men's stuff, I was never invited. I was never, like, I think I probably helped my dad once. And that was because like, we were doing something in the backyard. Yo quería huevo, quería a huevo ayudar. And my, obviously my sister was always like his pride and joy because she was the only girl. So as a kid, um, I would say I hated my dad. Mm. And it's funny because my grandma was, oh, fuck, I feel so weird talking about this like on camera, but you know, I just feel so comfortable right now sharing it. Um, my grandma, the one I, well, I love both my grandmas, but obviously, you know, you have your grandma that you grew up with and right. you have so much sentimental. The one that lives with me, is actually my dad's mom. And I was like this, I, I'm like this with her. And my grandma as a kid, she's like, mijo, tu no tienes que sentir odio. And I was like, it's cause grandma, no one understands. Like my dad doesn't love me. Like my dad treats me differently. Like I kid you not, you guys, like. A mí me daba un dólar y a mis siblings les daba cinco. O a veces a mí no me daba nada y a mis siblings sí les daba. And that's where I feel like as a kid, Martita had to step in. And, you know, it was funny because my siblings, 
would always tell my mom, like, es que tú le das más cosas a, a Alan. Tú le das más, le, le compras más cosas a, a mi hermano. But it was only because Martita was trying to make up for all the love that balance, I felt yeah. absent from my dad. Right. You know what I mean? Because, sea lo que sea, mi dad, you guys, and I'll say this, and I've always talked to my family about this, like, gracias a Dios, mi dad como padre, as a provider, nunca nos falló. Mm -hmm. Whether we went through struggles or not, like, no sé también cómo lo hacía él, but he would, eso es la cosa que yo siempre le voy a agradecer y por eso yo quiero mucho a mi dad. Y ahora, ya, I'm starting to, like, yo pienso que después de mucho, I actually just had a conversation with my grandpa, with my grandma the other day. I was like, yo ya no siento resentimiento with my dad. Right. You know what I mean? Like, lo miro and I'm like, you know what? Like, different times, you know, he didn't know how to raise a kid, but nunca me faltó nada. Right. And if my mom had to put the extra effort to make me feel loved, she did. And I always felt loved. I remember there was times where I would go crying to my mom and my dad doesn't love me, my dad this, my dad that. And this was before I was coming out. Right. This was as a kid. You know what I mean? Like, we used to sobar my dad. To, to, he would give us money and we would massage him, right? right it was right, stupid right. massages. It was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. get on top of him, walk on him, right, but he right, would right. give us money. And as a kid, yo miraba todo eso. A mi sister le daba cinco y a, y a mi un dólar. Si mi sister quería diez, okay, diez, sobame por 30 minutos and you'll get your ten dollars. Y yo nunca, yo lo más que agarré probably like two bucks. You know what I mean? And yes, you can see, oh, maybe your sister was older. My sister's only like two years older than right. Like what fucking... Can she be doing, you yeah. know what I mean? But you know So that. as a kid, yo notaba cositas yeah. así. Or like, oh, my dad talks so highly of my brothers. Like, what about me? You know what I mean? So I know that now, ya que mira todo. And like, you know, I think he sees that like out of all the kids, like I've helped him out the most. You know what I mean? Um, not saying that my other siblings are, they haven't, but like, you know. Right, right, right. I, I do a lot for my family. I do sometimes feel like he feels like like bad for right. like it takes maybe, back what he yes and I, I i understand him like i like i said i spoke with my grandma i was like yo no siento resentimiento like i love my dad now because for a lot of years i hated him yeah i didn't love him i felt like i didn't love him but now i'm like you know what it's my father he was not giving a rule but to see he was not giving a fucking booklet of how to raise kids yeah, mucho menos a gay kid yeah someone that's different especially growing up machista growing up with this perspective of how to, a life you yeah. know what i mean like none of his siblings were gay so he didn't have that experience he might have had cousins or whatnot but like they were around him all the time you know what i mean so i now as an adult like i'm able to appreciate everything my dad did maybe not emotionally but like todos los sacrificios que se tuvieron que dar para pa que yo pudiera tener la vida que tuve porque mi gracias a dios a lo mejor me faltaron gustos pero comida techo ropa y uno un hogar nunca me faltó yeah you, you know what that. i mean that's crazy well thank i appreciate you sharing that like yeah. like I, I know there's probably people out there that that want to hear that or or like yeah. are learning a lot from that and could take away from that so I appreciate that. Now talking about your success, you're a very, very successful YouTuber. You have um, a big following, Instagram. You're loved by a lot of influencers. I've I've seen the amount of love they give you. Your birthday party was fucking yeah. crazy. Sorry, that shit was crazy. Yeah, yeah, I know you're good. Um, and um, how how did your childhood or you growing up have to like did that drive you? Because you have a lot of drive. You're one of the most that I've worked with influencers yeah. that. You're posting videos constantly, constantly yeah. daily. You know, there's sometimes where obviously everyone needs breaks, but you are fucking hustling. How, where did you get that, that drive from? Was it that all those struggles that you had growing up? Was that yeah. what motivated you? You know what it is too. I, I do think that has a lot to do with it because yo de niño, yo, yo miraba mucho. Y yo de niño, yo siempre era muy preguntón. Ask my grandma, ask anything. Yo a los 10 años, hoy grandma, ¿Cuánto dinero usted tiene en su banco? Ya, yeah, yo, ask him. Oh, grandma, ¿a quién le va a dejar su fortuna? Yo, yo diría, y grandma, la casa cuando usted, de niño, dude, like, yo era muy, I will say, I was, I was always very ambitious. Very. Para todo. Yo me acuerdo cuando estaba chiquito, yo, yo, yo le preguntaba a mi abuelita porque dije, ah, no, a ver si me dice que a mí me la va a dejar. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I'll be set up with a casita en México or something. You know what I mean? Y yo le preguntaba, y grandma, ¿y cuánto es esto dinero en México? Y grandma, ¿y cuánto dinero usted trae? Like, But yeah, yeah, yeah. anything I would ask money-wise. You know what I mean? And I feel like growing up, 
and seen a lot of situations of us getting kicked out, seen money come and go in our household, seen how much. And I will say this, too. A lot of my siblings didn't get to see a lot of those struggles because at the time when all those struggles were going on, um, they weren't living with us. Right. You know what I mean? Like they had they moved out. They se fueron a vivir con el novio, con la novia. Like they weren't living with us. So their life. I feel like me as a kid, I was 16, 15, 17 años, from 15 to 17, yo miré mucho like, whoa. Mm. Y yo, I will say this, and I've talked to my mom, and respectfully, I've always said this. I was like, yo amo la vida, and I'm so thankful for la vida que me dieron mis padres, pero yo quiero una mejor vida. Right. And I feel like that's always been my goal. Like, when I'm not hustling enough, when I'm taking too much of a break, or when I'm being lazy, I'm always like, what the fuck? You mm. can go back. Yeah. Y yo nunca quiero eso. You know what I mean? And I will say this, like, maybe I'm not at the top of my career. Maybe I'm not at my peak at, you know, because I will say this, like, you, like we were talking about this actually right. not too long ago, about how every influencer has its peak. I didn't take advantage of my peak. And what I mean by peak is when the influencer is being the most talked about. Cuando apenas están saliendo, um, y, oh my God, yo quiero este influencer, I love it, life, whatever, yeah, and you're yeah, yeah. blowing up. Right. That's your peak. If you don't take advantage of your peak, and I've talked to so many influencers, take advantage of that shit because being at your peak does not last forever. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I've, 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 I'm so proud of is that because I noticed that I didn't take advantage of my peak, I was always very like, I got to turn, I turn it around really quick. And my, my, pers my, my mentality was like, was not on, I want to be at my peak again. My mentality was like, I want to be established. Yes. And, and, and that's what I feel that you are. I, yeah. I, I feel that you're, it doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter. Maybe I'm matter, not the obviously. most popping influencer right. right now. And I accept that like, cool, but I'm established. Right. I have a fan base. I have people that like love watching me. I have people that hate me and they contribute to my fucking wealth too. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Keep and, on clicking. Yeah. And, and with influencers, people know who I am. Right. Like, you know when you're respected enough when you walk in a room. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you mm -hmm. know when you're loved. You know when people love you. And you know that, like, you've built a name and you've built a career and you've built something for yourself that no one can take away. Yeah. Because the peak, te lo pueden quitar. Y si no hiciste nada, and if you stop after your peak, that's why you see a lot of people that blow up on TikTok. They they get their peak. They go MIA. And yeah, then, and then where it. are they? Yeah, They're not doing it. anything with it. You know what right. I mean? And for me, that was always my my thing like i wanted to create something for myself and my family because you know you guys see me i'm a very and it's crazy because i'm very cold when it comes to myself like el otro día me, me, me compré una bolsa and i was like oh my god i don't deserve it i don't deserve it pero ando gasti gasti en fiestas for my family right, like right, right. doing the most for my family and I, I the other day i went on a shopping spree and i was like i'm doing this for me like yes tiempo que yo disfrute and i feel like when i first started making money obviously it was like oh, what the fuck are you doing my parents my parents thought i was selling drugs or doing something right, illegal right, right. uh when i got my first youtube check it was a heft what oh, oh not my first one. When I got my first payment on, not YouTube, like a, my first payment, like a good amount of money on Instagram, I think it was like a grand. Um, my mom was shook. She's like, no. Que va, ese dinero no. <laughs> she thought it was like dinero lavado or yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. They didn't believe it until I had to sit her down and I'm like, look, mom, like yo hago videos, gente los mira. A mí me pagan por patrocinar esto. And she started understanding because my mom was very, very old school. Yeah. And that's also something I'm very proud to say that like through social media, through the people that watch me, I've seen an evolution in my mom. Mi mom, de antes no era de tatuajes. She got her first tattoo because of me and social media. You know, <laughs> yeah. my mom antes no era de, oh, uh, yo, I would get both. Ay, yo no, yo no, eso no sé por qué. Yo, yeah. Y ahora agarra, ella me los pide. She's like, like hey, when's my next me, appointment? Yeah, yeah, like, show me the one, tell me. <laughs> so I know my parents are very proud of everything I've done. I know my parents, you know, are very happy for me. And I will say that because... I am where I am because of my parents. Me enseñaron cómo ser alguien. Because algo que sabe mi dad, that's what I'm saying. Like, my dad siempre ha sido un, 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 till this day he's still working. No quiere parar de trabajar. You know what I mean? To this day, he, he's always been a hard worker. 
And whether he had to go to Home Depot every day, twice a day to try to get hustling. it. He was hustling. You, yeah. don't, you don't know nothing when you're in a fucking place undocumented. Like, you can't just show up somewhere and be like, hire me. And he also didn't want to work at a... And this is something that he that he that I learned from him. He didn't necessarily taught it to me, but I picked up from it because... My mom, when he didn't have a job and there was a time where he wasn't getting jobs at fucking um, the okay. Home Depot, yeah. my mom le decía, come to the warehouse, come work at a warehouse. Y mi daddy said, no, yo sé mucho, I know too much to be paid $10 an hour. Mm. He knew his value. Mm. And that's something that like stuck with me because now as someone that does this, I know my value. I know the value of so you bring my voice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I know what I can do. I know what I can bring. And that's what I mean. Like there's so much shit that my parents maybe don't know they taught me, but they taught me. Yo estoy yeah. aquí por ellos. Yo estoy aquí por su sacrificio. They came over here to get a better life. And luckily like me fue bien and I'm doing the most I can to make them proud. There's times where I feel like I'm not giving them enough time, but I like to think of like I'm hustling and there'll be a time where like you're going to be able to rest. Yeah. You know, and that's why I post so much. That's why, you know, I feel like a lot of people online tend to be like, oh, you're just in it for the money. No, if I was in it for the money, you'd be able to catch on. I'm in it because I enjoy it and it does give me and my family a living. So why not? Like, yeah, I feel that you've been doing it for a long time that there's, yeah. there's, there's, there's people that do it for the money, but that only lasts so long. Yes. You know what I mean? When you do things for the wrong reasons, it only lasts a long time when you're doing this because it's your passion and because it's something that you love to do. It, obviously it shows and, and your work has been shown, you know, for a long time. Yeah. So like, how are you feeling? Because obviously with the success you're having on, in, on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok now with all those platforms comes those comments, comes yeah. the, the, that negativity. Uh, everything is positive when it comes from our, our end. And we want to, yeah. you know, show positivity to the world. Right. But then there's always those people that come in your comments. How does that fuck with you mentally? Cause a lot of people talk about that, but I want you to, I want to hear it from you, like your personal, like how does that, does that fuck with you where it's like, fuck, I don't want to do this no more yeah. or does it Tawita and shit or what? You know what's crazy? Um, when I first started, si me aguitaba un chingo. Yo, it's funny because a lot of the things that people attack me on is my weight, mm. you know, and you know, I have a history online of my weight always fluctuating. Just last year, I was at, fucking very small weight and this year i gained 40 pounds right now i'm working on taking them off you know what i mean so that's always been a topic of conversation i just feel like people forget that at the end of the day i turn off the camera i get off my phone and i'm a real ass person i'm a fucking person you can see on the street i just happen to have a fucking following and i feel like people forget and people don't think i have feelings and when i started um i remember back in 2016 it was a really really tough year for me because i was gaining weight um you know i went from weighing 150 pounds which i haven't weighed 150 pounds since 2015 2016 to weighing like 200 something yeah um and People saw me very skinny doing my little makeup videos and then they saw me getting really fat. So that was obviously a big like, what the fuck is going on? Who the yeah. fuck is this fat ass bitch I'm seeing on my screen? Yeah. You know, so I obviously already felt so bad about how I looked. I, you, I can't sit down and be here and be like, every time I've been big, I've been happy. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, no, like I can't be here and lie. You know what I mean? And that is why I've never been like... Not saying that I'm not a body positive person, but I've never been someone that be like, you can be happy and be fucking 300 pounds because right. I've never been happy. Yeah. If, 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 it's, if you are, shout out to you, like all mean, all respect, but I've never been like one to be like, I'm so happy being this big and encouraging you guys to feel happy because- That's not how you feel. It's not how I feel. And right. I'm sorry if that comes out fucked up, but it's just like- how am I going to go online and portray that I'm happy about how I look when deep down I'm fucking crying every night because I let myself go? You know what right. I mean? So back in that time in 2016, like I said, it was a really tough year because all my comments were, he gained so much weight. He's so fat. He's so fat. And I was already feeling like that. I was already feeling fucking fat. I was already feeling fucking ugly. My jawline was gone. My double chain came in. You know what I mean? And I would cry a lot. I would cry because I would be like, fuck, like I post something, whether it's not even a body pic and all my comments are, you're fat, you're fat, you're fat, you gained weight, you gained weight. And I wasn't even 18 at the time. Yeah. I was still a kid. And imagine fucking grown ass adults fucking attacking you over your fucking weight. 
um, it was hard and I would cry a lot. I would cry a lot. I would, there was a time where it got really dark for me where I was like, you know what? Like, should I just stop posting? And I did stop posting for a time, but like comments would still come back when I would post. And so I can't lie and sit down here and say that suicidal thoughts never came in my head. You know what I mean? And over the years, I feel like I just started, you know, not even loving myself because I don't, I don't think like, oh, that's what changed. I think what changed is that I started seeing things differently as in like the people that are coming at me, they have a problem with themselves, not mm. with me. Yeah. Because I'm just a random online. If you really think about it, like the people watching me, the people loving me, I'm a random to you. Like, yeah, you, you know me and you think you know me, but like technically speaking, yeah. like we're not like you don't know me know me i don't we don't know each other yeah. you know what i mean so now i feel like i'm able to be like ah like mm. i don't give a fuck and another next exclusiva i feel like the last time the last time that i've gotten but her over comments was when i was going through my scandal mm. wait my two scandals my friend steph scandal and my irma scandal did that affect you that that affect you it didn't um, affect me but it really did get me really, really sad because I feel like a lot of people were having this misconception of the person I am and they ran with these five second clips with this podcast that you can sit down here, another and exclusive. A lot of the fighting that happened in that podcast, we didn't think it was juicy no. enough. So we were like, you guys, we should just like act like we're fighting or something. And yeah. I still have those clips. Yeah, we're trying to amp it up a little bit. We were bit trying to amp it up. We thought you know, it was like, not even that. <laughs> we like we, we were done filming and we're like, oh, I feel like this episode is going to be whack because they were just promoting their, their podcast. podcast. So we're like, let's amp it up, make it juicy. Um, but regardless the case, like um, when a lot of people were saying like, I'm a bad friend, that I'm a bitch to my friends, that like my friends don't deserve me. It got me really because I'm like, I like to think that I'm a good friend. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I go above and beyond never expecting shit for my friends. Like my friends could sit down in here. My real friends could sit down in here and say that like, I do stuff for them. Sin que ellos me lo piden. Right. You know, I'm always Irma, me and Danny are always fucking like procurandonos for like, what can Irma do to better herself? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like maybe we play tough and everything, but like, like we're, I like to think we're genuine friends. So the reason it was hurting me so much when everything was going on was because I'm like, yo sé que no soy así, pero me, me pone tan triste que haya mucha gente que piensen que yo soy una mala persona. Right. Pero so it's almost like that little thing that I did bad, they forget of all the good thing I've done. And that's the thing that, that, that's, that sucks sometimes because I feel that even when it comes down to like even family members, mm -hmm. like, Mm -hmm. If they hear something about you and they really know how you are and who you are and they fucking basically grew up watching you yeah. grow and shit and they hear one little bad thing. They forget everything. They forget all the shit that they know about you and they just run with that yeah. negative, like, which is kind of fucked up. But I felt you're like, when you're going through that, I was like, fuck, dude, that's yeah. so fucked up. You know, like, It's crazy because it's like, I've done so much shit great things that even there's a lot of shit that I don't even tell, you know, to be like, but I've documented so many amazing memories and everything that I've done. It's almost as if like, no one gives a fuck about all the good things I've done. Right. But then that little slip up or that little fuck up thing that I do, it's a big deal. And I'm like, I'm human. Like no one that's watching this fucking video and I'm looking at y'all straight in the motherfucking face. No one that's watching this video can sit down here and tell me they've never had a slip up. No one can sit down here and tell me that they're a fucking perfect ass person Yeah. because you're not, we're human. And yes, sometimes you do this. Sometimes you say this, even if you don't mean it, but people can take it like, you know, yeah. like mix it up. Right. And that's where I was at, where I was like, bitch, like, la gente piensa esto de mi, but whatever. Yeah, and I'm I not the, even going to prove TikTok, I think TikTok is like really toxic. Toxic. Yeah. It's a good thing for, for, for upcoming people that are trying to blow up. But then it's also, it could also fucking back, <laughs> backfire yeah. on you because uh, people that make little clips. I, I was talking to my brother about this last time. I was like, dude, like if we, if someone posts a TikTok saying, this person did this to this person. You automatically, for some fucking hate reason, the person. you hate that fucking yeah. person until you start reading the comments. You're like, oh, this is fake. This is fake. Yeah. This is fake. So it's like that app, I feel, is it's manipulative. Really manipulative yeah. and fucking toxic. And I will say this. Like, I won't sit down here and say that, like, oh, when everything was going on, I didn't think, you know, 
that I was doing amazing things, you right. know, that what I said was amazing. But yo sé como fue. I know stuff that, like, my friend Steph has said to me that isn't okay to be online, but obviously I don't put it on there because she asks me not to put it right. on there. Yo sé the relationship. I know that I said things to her, she said things to her, but it's like no one gets but her. And I remember when everybody was telling me shit, I did sit down with both Irma and her and we're like, hey, you know, I'm so sorry. Like, I didn't think about it like this. Like, I'm sorry if I'm offending you. And they were like, like, I feel like people are overreacting. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know why you're apologizing to me. And to me, that was more than enough. Mm. That was more than enough because as long as the people that know me, the people that fuck with me, the people that I love and that I'm hurting are the ones that are like, oh, like that know there's no nothing, then right. why am I over here like doing the most? And that's why I didn't talk about it. I didn't talk about it. I didn't even give people like the time of day. You know, I was like, I was like, you know what? People are going to move on. And it's crazy. Like you said, TikTok is where that's at. Mm. You know what I mean? I feel like, La gente mira algo and they bandwagon. Yeah. Because there was even people that didn't even fucking know me, have never watched a fucking video in my fucking just life. Shit. And they were talking shit. And I'm like, bro, shut the fuck <laughs> up. You yeah. don't know me. Like, yeah, yeah. you're basing yourself off a fucking five second clip. Mm. You know what I mean? And if that TikTok goes viral, if that something goes viral, everyone's attacking. Yeah. And it, I feel like what happened too, like, it was also Danny's birthday weekend when everything was going on. So we were doing a lot. That I didn't really like sit down and get super sad. I yeah. just got a little like aguitado. Like I think Sunday is when it hit me because I didn't do anything Sunday. I was like sleeping in. And I was like, damn, people think I'm a fucking evil ass person. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. like, what about all the good things I've done for yeah, all these yeah, people? Yeah. Or just in general. Like No, me personally, I, I fucking know you do. Like yeah. and and you even to me, like I've worked with a lot of people that do have sometimes they're bad days, but sometimes take it out on 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 yeah. me a little bit, you know, because they're having a rough day and you I, I can say hundred percent like You've always been a fucking cool ass person. Always Thank giving you. me advice. Always helping me out. Again, like I said, if it and wasn't I feel for like you, I'm I wouldn't very, have jumped for this YouTube stuff. And I feel stuff, like I'm you know? a very, you know what it is, you guys, like with him, um, like he would always be like, oh, I'm so shy to start YouTube. And I'd be like, yeah. dude, do it. Like yeah. you're not, you can be more than just a videographer. You right. can be more than just a photographer because I see like potential in people. And, I, and I've told you so many mm -hmm. times, like I've given him advice on like, everything and i'm not gonna sit down here and like i said like i'm only bringing it up because he brought it up you yeah, know what yeah. i mean but i've never like sat down anywhere and be like oh he's doing this because i've asked and i've done that with a lot of people mm. you'd be surprised the amount of youtubers that like would come to me for advice and like i would give them advice and then stop talking to me you know right. be after they've reached success after they've reached greatness it's happened more than once mm. but i don't sit down here and be like oh i did this for them i helped right. them with this right. I'm not you that type of person. It, you know? I genuinely do it. If they fuck me, I've had people around me like, you're too nice. Mm. You give too much great advice. You give too much knowledge because at the end of the day, knowledge is power. You know what I mean? And I'm like, I don't care. If, I, if the day of tomorrow, no me dejan de hablar que porque están con otra persona más importante, right. me vale. Mm. Yo ya hice lo que hice y yo sé que lo hice de corazón. If they don't know how to appreciate me, there's going to come a, a friend or something that will appreciate me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm very like that. And talking about like you helping me out, what is, I want to ask you a couple of questions because there's a lot of people out there that are trying to yeah. become YouTubers that are trying to become influencers. Um, and they, they have, like you're saying, they have the potential and they have that, the character, you know, yeah. you always see that person was like, damn, I can see him being an influencer, Influ or, or, yeah, or yeah. Comic, comedy and all that stuff. Like what is an advice for people that are trying to become YouTubers. I like to say just go for it because I feel I feel like a, a la gente a la gente what stops a lot of people is the I don't have the equipment. I don't have the camera. I don't have this. When you want something, you figure it out. Mm. You film on your phone. Everyone has a phone. If you want to do social media, you at least have a fucking phone. Mm. On your phone, you can edit. For a long time, I used to vlog on my phone before I was able to afford an actual good camera. You know what I mean? I used to vlog all my beginning vlogs on my phone. Mm. Um, I would just say go for it. Um, don't get discouraged by the comments because the bigger you become, the more comments you get. Because mm. I feel like when I first started, oh, everybody loved me. Like all my comments were filled with love. The more exposure I got, you're... you're, you're putting yourself in a situation where there's more people where where more people can attack you right right um so i just say 
do what you got to do, do what you love, do it for you. Um, and just keep going, keep hustling. If you don't see an increase of followers in a day, in a month, in a year, keep fucking going because the moment you stop, you already fucked up your fucking like momentum. Momentum. You already fucked up your momentum because what about if like you weren't seeing a change, but like right here at this mark, there was going to be a change, but mm -hmm. you stopped right here. Stop too soon. Now you're in the back. Now yeah. you got to start all over because I will say this. One thing I will say to every influencer, the moment you stop producing content, the moment you take a break, and I've noticed that with myself, there's going to be a new person in town. There's going to be a new influencer loved by everyone in town. And now everybody's being an influencer that you're going to be forgotten. Yeah. This is us. This is such a fast paced lifestyle. If you're not producing, if you're not creating content, if you're not entertaining people, people will find someone else to entertain them. So, and like I told you, like when you stopped, when you had stopped doing your vlogs, yeah. I'm like, you got to keep yeah, going because <laughs> there's a new videographer in town that wants to do this, or there's a new business owner that wants to do this. Right. Like everybody always wants a piece of that cake and it just comes down to who really wants it. You know, who's really to, who is really down to put in the work because this social media shit. Yes. I'm a, my own boss, but you're constantly fucking and You fucking working. work a lot. And I noticed like, that about you. Like you are disciplined and you have great work ethic thank because you, thank you. fuck bro. Like the, the amount, like I, again, I, you, like yeah. you're saying, I tried doing the and vlog you do too though. You do too. But I tried doing the vlog for instance. Right. And the amount of work that, uh, and it seems maybe like easy, easy for other yeah. people, but just thinking about the fucking thumbnail, the, the caption, the title, the or description, just the idea. Idea. Yeah. Cause <laughs> as someone that vlogs a lot, I fucking have uploaded on my channel over 700 videos, Fuck. over 700 videos. Um, what else can I film? Yeah. That's what fucks me up. Like, I've done it all. I've yeah. done mukbangs. I've done challenges. I've done dancing videos. I've done... Pot like, what the fuck else can I do to keep my audience entertained? And that's one thing that fucks me mentally because I'm like... I get to a point where I'm like creative, uh, a creator block and I'm just like, I'm boring as fuck. Yeah. So just keep going, you guys. Don't let shit discourage you. And sometimes if there's going to be people around you that like think that you're not good enough, fucking cut them off because when you fucking make it, they're going to want to a piece of that cake and they're they're only gonna want it because you've made it yeah not being there with you through that struggle you know yeah what do you have to say to your followers because i i feel that sometimes like we, i see the numbers right yeah on, on instagram you see the subscribers what do they mean to you because, because there's people that i don't know do you recognize people like that yeah. comment like oh i remember i know this guy I he know, always there, comments yeah always no there's there's certain followers of mine that like you know i recognize them even one of them went, um, I've invited people to like my parties. One of, um, shout out to them. Um, they were at my sister's wedding, mm -hmm. you know, like there's, and I feel like for me, my followers mean a lot to me because they're, they give me what I have. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, maybe if I don't say it every day or I am knowledgeable that tengo lo que tengo, estoy en donde estoy, not because of just my work ethic, because I can have a fucking big ass, right. you know, a, a crazy ass work ethic. But if I don't have people que me respalda, if I don't have people that support me, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to be shit. Like, my followers always fucking surprise me. Like, every time I launch merch, I always get so scared because I'm like, no se va a vender. No se yeah. Because it has fucking pinche pendeja <laughs> on a shirt. Like, there's sometimes comments where we're like, ay, que pendeja compré eso. And then I'm like, oh my God, like, should I not launch right, that? Right. But y'all come the fuck through and I feel like, Y'all know, y'all know that y'all mean so much to me. When I meet you guys, I get so happy because it's all, like you said, it's different seeing that number online, those likes, those comments that when you see it in person. Right. Because a veces you're like, ah, yeah, this might be. But when you see that shit in person, when you see people crying because they are meeting you, when you see it's fucking crazy. And it's like it gets you in a moment where you're like, right, like, right. It all makes sense. Yeah. It all makes sense. And it's sometimes, like I said, coming from a person that like growing up, maybe like felt like wasn't loved enough. Like you have all that. I have that. And um, I don't know. It makes me so happy because like when people tell me like, oh, there was actually one story TMI. Um, well, not TMI. Just there was this person that told me that they were like in the it was a, it's a really hard story. Um, I met them at the mom and the girl was crying hysterically. And I was like, oh my God, what's wrong? Like, are you okay? Like, calmate, like, está bien. Like, it's just me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But this really hit me. Like, it really hit me because she told me that just when she discovered my channel last year, 
she was at a point where she wanted to commit suicide. Like she was literally like was taking pills and everything. She started watching my videos. And at the time I was uploading every day and my videos were was what kept her alive during that like hard time of her life and yeah. seeing me in person meant so much more than i ever thought it could you know right. what i mean and that really hit me because i was like wow like, like the um, impact like i have, have impact on yeah. people like all that when shit like that happens all the negative shit that i go through all the negative shit the scandals the haters or just shit in my personal life kind of like a blur right because i'm like wow like there's people out there who really fuck with me they don't know me but i make a difference in their life and i feel like that's why i create content because you know and i create so much content because there's people Que esperan ese right. contenido. There's and, and people you, you that pose that they're like, yeah. Wait, where the fuck is a vlog? Yes. <laughs> or like I'll, I'll i'll upload five times a week but like i'll miss one day and they're like why are you not posting? <laughs> like I've been waiting. I'm like, damn. Like, that's so I'm good. sorry. That's, that's good. good. That's good to yeah. have. Yeah. Because you know that people are waiting for it. You know that people are anxious to see what. You're y me siento culpable a veces. I'm like, fuck. Like I'm not producing enough. But I'm like, bitch. I posted 25 videos in this month. Like, what other fucking YouTuber posts that much in a month? Yeah, you know what I mean? Like crazy. it's a lot. You know. But I don't know. It just makes me happy. And if you're watching this, you know, wherever the fuck you are, just know that you mean a lot to me. And like I said, I'm forever grateful for the platform, for the lifestyle, and for everything you guys have provided, not just for myself, but for everybody around me, my friends, my family, because gracias a ustedes, yo no soy el único que disfruta de los frutos de este árbol. Everyone around me does too. And you guys know it. You guys see it in my vlogs. You guys see it. Like, I think I do more things for other people than I do for myself. I see that a lot. And I love that. Like, yeah. when people plan shit for me, I don't like that shit. Right. I'm like, don't, like... Don't do that for me. Like, no me lo merezco. And it's so sad that I think que no me lo merezco. But I am, my love language is showing people love. Yeah. Like, showing people, like, te quiero echar una fiesta. Te quiero... Uh, Los quieres consentir. Consentir. Yeah. You know, because, you know, a lot of my friends don't make, and family don't make the money I do. So, obviously, it's harder for them to be able to, like, do crazy stuff. And I'm like, no. Like, money when... To me, one of the things I will say is, like, money... I don't want money when you're around me to ever be an issue. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, and I don't allow that to be an issue. You right. know what I mean? Like, maybe we'll have other issues. I like, yeah. maybe we'll get down. <laughs> but like, like money for me is like, it comes and goes. Like, obviously, like, I save my money, but like. You're like, I'm cold over. I'm like, I'm cold over <laughs> with myself. Or like, I'll save money. But like, I love, you know, sharing what I have with people around right. me. No, well, thank you. I appreciate you being here. Um. It was a really dope conversation. Thank you. Thank you. I really learned a lot about you. And I hope everyone here uh, that's watching learned a little bit more. Very about raw, y'all. A little bit more of your personal level yeah. because I feel that. I don't know if you do share that much. you know. I but, don't. I stopped. But I wanted I wanted to talk to you because I was like, I always work with you. And I'm like, fuck, I always have like questions. And I'm like, dude, I wonder how, what got him to this point. You know, like just yeah. little questions like that. Where it's like, I know that when I go with you, we're working and we don't really have time to like have to that type like, of yeah. conversation. So I was like, fuck, I want to really talk to you. But thank, thank you so much for thank being here. You. I appreciate you guys i'm gonna leave his links down below obviously you guys know who he is you know but i'll leave his links down below thank you guys for watching till next time this was influence me bye guys